Hello, as I promised you last week, this week I would like to talk in just five minutes about cognitive conceptualization. Cognitive case conceptualization, also known as case formulation, is one of the most important and essential aspects of cognitive therapy. Case conceptualization can be defined as the description of the problems that the patient presents and, through theory, allows the therapist to make inferences, that is, draw conclusions that can explain the causes and factors that maintain particular psychological or psychiatric disorders. However, I would say that uh, case conceptualization, above all, guides the therapist to choose the best interventions and strategies or techniques so that he or she can better help the patient change his or her psychological difficulties. In my opinion, one of the most difficult and at the same time most important aspects of case conceptualization is sharing its components with the patient. On the other hand, it is important to know that case conceptualization is an individualized work and must be developed in cooperation in collaboration with the patient from the beginning, I would even say from the first contact in the moment the patient is educated and informed about the cognitive model. There are uh, many case conceptualization diagrams uh, proposed by different authors for different disorders, but the most well-known and also the most widely used is the conceptualization diagram found in Judy Beck's excellent and classical book, Cognitive Behavior Therapy, Basic and published by Guilford. In this video, I will show very briefly Judy Beck's conceptualization diagram and uh, then we'll compare it with the trial-based cognitive therapy conceptualization diagram. It starts from the bottom with three different situations and the consequent automatic thoughts, emotions and behaviors generated by them. However, uh, the meaning of the automatic thought, represented by the dotted line that goes up, is what one looks for, indicating that intermediate beliefs and above all core beliefs are the sources which are responsible for the automatic thoughts and consequent emotions and behaviors. A good history collected in the initial sessions will bring the relevant childhood data that determined the development of different positive and negative core beliefs. My idea was to create a conceptualization diagram that would allow the patient to more easily understand the cognitive model and to access this model throughout the entire course of therapy. It can be seen here that the components of the TBCT conceptualization diagram are the same as those found in Judith Beck's diagram. Thus, just like in conventional CBT, the TBCT diagram was developed in three levels and three phases. Today, uh, we will focus only on the first level and first phase and leave the other levels and phases to be discussed in the next videos. So, a situation or trigger that is perceived by the patient as dangerous in the automatic thoughts box can generate, say, anxiety in the emotion box, which in turn can paralyze the patient and provoke racing heart and sweating in the behavior and physiological responses box. On the other hand, uh, the arrows going in the opposite direction, returning to the emotion, automatic thoughts and situation boxes, give the patient the idea of the circular nature of these interactions, forming a vicious circle. This vicious circle is what makes it possible to understand the confirmatory bias. That is, if one predicts something bad will happen, the emotion and behavior will go in that direction and will eventually provoke a new unpleasant situation that closes the cycle. This prevents the patient from evaluating the initial situation and consequently changing the misperceptions about it and what it triggers as a consequence.